Judicial Watch has filed a lawsuit seeking information about former President Obama's $400 million cash payment to Iran. The watchdog group wants to see communications between the U.S. and Iran for the transfer last year. At the same time, five American hostages were released. Now, the Obama administration insists the payment was not a ransom. Joining me now to discuss that lawsuit and a lot more, Chris Farrell, the director of investigations and research at Judicial Watch. Chris, good to see you. What evidence have you discovered that it was a ransom? We all kind of assume common sense tells us it was, but you're looking for evidence. Sure. And in this case, we're looking at things as simple as flight logs for aircraft uh, departing and arriving in Iran, uh, the actual movement of the cash that was in shrink wrap bundles, um, and then the testimony, the, the obvious statements of the people themselves who were held hostage, who have admitted in public to the press that, well, we weren't allowed to leave until that plane arrived with the cash. This is not hard to put together. Uh, President Obama went on television and essentially lied to the American public and said, oh, gee, we didn't really have a mechanism of, of moving money to Iran because of the sanctions. I mean, this stuff is laughable. Anybody in the financial services industry knows that all sorts of money can be cabled anywhere, uh, you know, with the press of a button. And certainly when you're flying cash on a private jet uh, into uh, Tehran, uh, look, all this needs to be exposed and peeled back. We want all the documentation, all the communication. The American public is owed that. We've paid ransom for hostages to, right. the, to the world's leading sponsor, state sponsor of terrorism. There's got to be accountability. Well, there's got to be accountability for history's sake, if nothing else, but also uh, because it could happen again. I mean, if word gets out that we're an easy touch, that we can be ransomed successfully, it's going to happen again and again. I just you, you, you mentioned the transfer of money and how important that is. And, and good investigators like you, and, and I try to do it myself, follow the money. Sure. Uh, there's this case of Imran Awan, and we talked <laughs> about him before. He was working for Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Yep. The guy was arrested for bank fraud before he fled the country to Pakistan. His wife had already left our country for Pakistan. She was on a payroll as well as Imran was. Uh, her children went with her to Pakistan and they were sending all this hundreds of thousands of dollars to Pakistan. Lord knows how, but some of it came from the Congressional Federal Credit Union. I mean, that's a very important institution. And for them to be involved in, in an illegal transfer of money is, is a problem, is it not? It is. Uh, well, look, it was a family operation. There was a brother and his wife involved yeah. and then another. So you've got essentially five or six related uh, Pakistanis running an information technology operation, not just for Debbie Wasserman Schultz, but also for a, a number of other Democrats. They had access to the Intelligence Committee and the Foreign Relations Committee's uh, servers and uh, all the communications, their email as well. And that includes, the, by the way, it, it, it should be obvious, but that includes very secret stuff. I mean, this guy who had, had inside dealings with Pakistan of some sort, whose, whose family fled to Pakistan, who was about to flee himself before right. he was arrested, uh, he had access to the most secret information and emails imaginable. Right, and when, when you're moving hundreds of thousands of dollars through the credit union on the hill and you know you're under a criminal investigation and you're fleeing the country that's a clue right we need to take this very seriously and instead you've seen debbie wasserman schultz deny 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 stonewall not answer uh, become indignant when questioned about it you want to talk about the need for a special counsel uh, she's living proof right there you know, she uh, was uh, questioning the uh, chief of the Capitol Police during a committee hearing and became very frustrated and very upset with him and essentially threatened him uh, when he said, look, I'm not going to turn over your IT equipment because it is the subject of an ongoing investigation. Uh, and she made these uh, not so veiled threats. Right. This kind of behavior is out of control, and the fact that she kept him on the payroll, uh, the, the, the head, the, the chief of the sort of the, uh, the Awan family uh, operation, until just before he tried to flee the country, yeah. 
This is a bad spy well, novel. May I no suggest, one would believe Chris, this. May I suggest that this be the source of uh, your next inv investigation? A we've lot been of, on it. We've been on it since the end of May. It's it's so, a great uh, mill uh, through which you can get a lot of grist uh, to, to send a lot of people away where they should be. Chris Farrell, good to see you. Thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, coming up next, Anthony Scaramucci out as White House Communications Director.